Well, good day. This is going to be about creating color on a computer screen. We all know that when we were back in kindergarten, we could mix paints together, and we were very surprised to get new different colors. And the three primary colors of paint are red, yellow, and blue. When you mix the colors together, they become darker and darker. That's how paint works. But computer color does not work that way. The basic colors on a computer screen are red, green, and blue, not yellow. And when you mix colors together on the screen, they do not become darker. They become lighter. If you mix all the colors together, just think of a prism where the rainbow is going backwards. When you mix all the colors together, you'll get white. Whites with all colors mixed together. This pink sort of color is called magenta, and this blue sort of color is called cyan. Cyan. So paint colors are red, yellow, and blue. But screen colors are red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue. Red can be super duper red, or it can get a little bit darker and a little bit darker and a little bit darker and a little bit darker until finally it's just about black. The same with green and the same with blue. The scale goes from 0 up to 255. That's the brightest red your screen can make. This is the brightest green your screen can make. It's 255. If the green number is smaller, the green will get darker and darker and darker. So if we wanted to describe this red circle, we could say the red is all the way up to 255. That's the highest you can go. There's no green at all. There's no blue at all. We didn't mix any colors. It's just bright, bright red. If you want it to be a little bit darker, you just lower the number of red. So it's still red. There's no green. There's no blue. There's no mixing of colors. It's just a darker red. Now this one's very dark red. The smaller the number, the darker the color. Here's green. It's maximum green. This is the brightest green your screen can make. If you lower the number, it becomes darker green. If you lower the number any more, even more, it gets even darker green. And it works the same way with blue. Here's the brightest blue. is 255. If you make the number smaller, it gets darker and darker. Here I mix some red and some green and some blue. And it's mostly red and it's mostly blue. And mostly red and mostly blue we know is some sort of a magenta color. So this is mostly a magenta color. If you wanted perfect magenta, the green would be zero. This color is mostly red and mostly green. And there's a little bit of blue thrown in. If you mix red and green together, you get some sort of a yellow, don't you? Here, the green and the blue are the big numbers, and red is very small. If you mix green and blue together, green and blue makes this cyan color, doesn't it? Now, there's some red in, so it's not a perfect cyan. If, if the red was zero, and the green and the blue were equal, it would be a perfect cyan. If all the numbers are the same, you're going to get some sort of gray. A darker gray is a lower number. The lower the number, the darker the gray. Are you taking notes? I hope you're taking some notes. If all the numbers are zero, you got the blackest black that you can get. The RGB, red, green, blue, the RGB numbers can reference a specific color, and many programs use this, red, green, and blue. Here's Microsoft Paint. Microsoft Paint wants to know what's the red, what's the green, what's the blue. And he'll give you the color based on how you mixed them. There are other numbering systems to help you reference a specific color, and I want to talk about that one. We know how decimals numbers work. We learned that when we were in first grade or even kindergarten. There's only ten numerals. Zero is a numeral. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Those are the only numerals we have. There are no other numerals. We just combine these to make all the numbers in the whole world. They, of course, have 10 numerals from 0 to 9. 
But there is a hexadecimal number system, and they have 16 numerals going from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then after 9, they have a symbol for 10, and they have a symbol for 11, and a symbol for 12, and the symbols are A, B, C, D, E, and F. It goes all the way to 15. So a total of 16 possible numerals. Let's see how this thing works. We know how decimals work. These are the onesies. These are the tensies. These are the hundreds. These are the thousands. And to get from the ones to the tens, you multiply times ten. To get from the tens to the hundreds, you multiply by ten. To get from the hundreds to the thousands, you multiply by ten. Decimal numbers. Three of these, one of these, four of these. And we learned if you have three hundreds and one ten and four ones, we say 314. 314, because we have three of those, one of those, and four of those. Now that's how decimals work, but what about hexadecimal numbers? Here's how they work. Here are the onesies, and here are the 16zs, and here are the 256zs, and here are the 4096zs. To get from one to the next, you multiply times 16. To get to the next one, you multiply times 16. Let's take a look and see how this would work. We have one of these, three of these, and 10, remember, A is 10, 10 of these. Let's see how it works. Oh, 314. Look, you could show your mom. Look, mom, 13A, 314. Let's do some examples. How would you write 17 in a hexadecimal number? 17, how would you do that? Well, to write 17, you need one of these, and you need one of these. 116 and 11. So you could write this down on a piece of paper, 11, and then take it to your mom and say, look, mom, look, mom, 17. 17. This is how a computer would see 17 when you're doing colors. Let's find out what's next. How would you write 35? 35 in a hexadecimal number. Can you figure it out? Thirty-five. Well, to get to thirty-five, you need two of these and three of those. Two of these would be thirty-two. Sixteen and sixteen is thirty-two. And thirty-two plus three is thirty-five. So you could write this down on a piece of paper and show it to your mom and say, Look, mom, look, mom, thirty-five. Thirty-five. I'm writing in hexadecimal numbers. Oh, not decimal numbers. Hexadecimal numbers. Let's do another one. How would you write 26? 26. Hmm, 26. Well, to get to 26, you need one of these and 10 of those. Remember, A is 10. 116 and 10 ones. 16 plus 10 26. Look, Mom, look, 26. Okay, here's, a, here's an easy one, but it seems hard at first. How would you write 170? 170 in hex. Think about it. Well, if you need 170, that's like 160 plus 10. So you'd need 10 of those and 10 of those. 160 plus 10 more, 170. And this is how you would write 170 in hexadecimal numbers. Well, colors go from 0 to 255. Each one goes from 0 to 255. So let's write 255. Here's how we would write it in decimal numbers like we did in first grade. But here's how we would write it in hexadecimal numbers. Remember, F is 15. So I got 15 of these plus 15 of these. 15 times 16 is 240. 15 ones is 15, and 
add them up, it's 255. So I can say 255 with just two characters, not three. So somebody thought this was a clever idea to go from zero to 255 using just two characters instead of three. So they write it like this. Here's a color. The first two numbers are the red value. The second two numbers are the green value. And the last two numbers are the blue value. We put this little cross hatch in front. Some people call it the pound sign. We put this little cross hatch in front to tell the computer a color is coming up. Let's do some practice. Red, green, and blue. It's all red. It's no green. There's no blue. Well, you could write it like this, and some programs do. They write it like this. What's the red? What's the green? What's the blue? But you could write it like this. Lots of red, no green, no blue. The red's maxed out at 255. 255, zero, zero. Just like red, green, blue. Here's one that's sort of mixed together. The red has a value. The green has a value. The blue has a value. You could write it out this long way. But there's an easier way to write it out. Some red, some green, some blue. 215 in hexadecimal is D7. 42 in hexadecimal is 2A. 182 in hexadecimal is B6. You could write it the old way. Or you could write it the new way. Red, green, and blue. Let's do another one. This color is some red, some green, but mostly blue. Look how big the blue is. The C is already 12, 12 sixteens, and so you know that's a very big number. This is a pretty small number, only 4. It could have went all the way up to F, which is 15. Some red, some green, some blue. All the numbers are the same. 9D, 9D, 9D. They're all 157 in decimal but in hexadecimal, they're 9D. And we know if all three numbers are the same, you're going to get some sort of gray. All the numbers are gray, and it's darker. Here, let's go back. This one is lighter. These are 9s. These are only 4s. So I know this is going to be darker. The lower the number, the darker the color. This number is 75. Here's how to translate decimal into hexadecimal really easy. Open up the calculator. You can just search for it on the taskbar. When you get to the calculator, change it to programmer by doing these three little lines. After you change it to programmer, you'll see hex or decimal. If you type in a decimal 63, he'll tell you the hexadecimal number is 3F. 3 16s three and 15 ones. You can find colors by name at www dot color hyphen hex dot com and I want to go out there and show you about this because I use this website a lot when I need colors so here I am at color hyphen hex dot com and it has some colors that are already set up for you somebody put these in there they thought they were favorites I don't I don't know if they're all that favorite but what I do is go up to colors and then it has color names so I like to look at this color names one I'm going to say got it down here. And then I'll just scroll down and you can see the color with its hexadecimal red, green, blue code. So there's like, I don't know how many hundreds of different colors on this list. So if you want this green color, you can see the red is 7F, but the green is FF. The green is just as green as it can be with some red thrown in. So if I wanted to change the color or something, I might look at these and see which color do I want, and then I would just copy this and paste it where I wanted it to go. Or I'd just write it on a piece of paper. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I use that all the time. If I want to get a color code, I usually go here first. You could go look at palettes. This one says popular palettes. I don't know how popular they really are. But this helps you get colors that sort of go together. And somebody, I don't know who it was, but somebody thought these colors go good together, or these colors go good together, or these colors go good together. 
So that's kind of useful, too. Well, that's about all there is for this one.